Very good. Uh, and Jillian, outstanding presentation. That was really, enjoyed that a lot. Really well done. Well, I hope that's not my sound. Okay, there we go. All right, this is, um, a, as you can see, a clever way to compute pi. And as a disclaimer, I didn't develop the method. The method is beyond me in cleverness and uh, possibly could be used in other, other problem applications. But I thought it was very ingenious. And so I reduced it to fourth. Let's see if I can hide a few things. Okay. Well, here is one computation for the value of pi. You can see there are a lot of terms. And also, this converges very, very slowly. As you, um, it, uh, it will take, as I understand it, it take uh, uh, 50 or 100 or a couple of hundred terms to get pi into a useful uh, number of, of digits. So it's a lot of work. And I wanted something that was very brief, very brisk, very fork-like. So here is the algorithm that is uh, developed. And that is, we want to develop pi from a, a, a guessed number. We're guessing n. We're developing n sequentially and then an error based on n. And so if you could imagine if the function of n, the error value is zero, then the n we have guessed must be pi. So our goal is to find an error function that will be zero for pi. And that means as, we, as the n grows toward pi, the error function will get smaller and smaller. And finally, when our calculated value of n is pi, the error function will be zero. So the key to this is to find where is there a function that uh, derived from pi that will be zero at the value of pi. And of course, we will be then iterating uh, n uh, sequentially. So at the green at the bottom, n will be approx n is approximate uh, pi is approximately equal to n from some starting value n zero plus this uh, this unknown function of n zero. And our current task is to find what is that function of n zero. Another way to express this is that if we take pi minus this uh, n zero guess then the result is the error and we're trying to minimize that error so as that uh, function approaches zero n zero approaches pi so the question is what is a good function of pi that would become zero well if if we uh if we use n square as pi squared uh that doesn't really work because it grows without limit uh, the log of pi would not be suitable. Uh, e to the pi is not suitable because none of these become zero for the value of pi. So we need another function. Well, how about a cyclic function? How about a tangent? Well, tangent is where, as you can see from the green arrow, tangent is zero at pi, but the function is not continuous. And therefore, our calculation becomes difficulty difficult because of the discontinuity and the approaches to plus and minus infinity but i think we're close so the question now how about sine of pi well in this case if we look at the um uh, the sign in um, uh, radian terms sure enough when the uh for the value of pi the sine of pi is zero. So we found a function that uh, hits our, our qualification of being zero at pi, and it is contiguous. And also, as we approach pi, it's plus from one side and minus on the other. 
So this uh, side, this will let us converge on the value of pi, regardless from the direction on which we approach it. So here's a geometric example. Let's say we guess the number n0, and then we compute the sine of n0, and that's the red arrow. So at each value, if we start at the beginning and increase n0, at pi over 2, we will reach the maximum value of 1, and then as n0 approaches pi, notice that arrow will become smaller and smaller as it approaches pi. And of course, at, uh, uh, at, at the uh, sine of pi, our uh, resulting value will be 0. So here we're closer, and here we're closer, and then finally we reach a 0 value at pi. So our function matches uh, the sine of pi uh, or the, the plan of n will, will give us the desired value. So now we'll put it into a, into a fourth code. Our um, guess number is going, our, our uh, computed number is going to be our guess number, n0, plus the error function, uh, the sine of n0. In fourth, the, uh, a single term calculation would be using floating point. We have an input value, we duplicate that number, we take the sine of it, we add the two together. Now, that single term calculation, which, which uh, solves that formula above, we'll put this into a loop and we'll, uh, we'll call it run pi. So we start with the, with the uh, exponential, with the uh, floating point value of one, and we're going to iterate over six loops. So we start at zero, run through five. So we duplicate the input number, we do one term, and then we compute sequentially six times, and let's see how close we get to pi. The uh, D charts, which, which I like a lot, graphically shows us the solution. The, uh, at the uh, top left, we see one E zero range is our initial value, and that comprises this run pi term. Then we have a, a do loop, and the uh, circle with an X in it is the uh, starting point of the do loop, and the dark circle at the bottom is the ending of the loop. And in the middle of that is, of course, this uh, code for one term, which is F dupe, F sine, F plus. So here is the resultant calculation. For the, the, uh, when we do run pi, on the table there, we see the, uh, the N0, which is our desired value, and the sine of n0, which is our error, our error component. So at the beginning, the uh, first entry is for the value of 1, and we see the error term is uh, a 0 0.84. Our next iteration is uh, on the left is 1.84. The error term is 1.96, which is a bit larger. Our next uh, iteration is 2.8, and the error term now is 0.33, getting smaller. And then sequentially, we go to 1.13, 1.145. And now, only after six terms, it is converging to uh, about 12 decimal points. So our calculated value on the sixth term is uh, 3.141592, which is the uh, number we all know and love. So our expansion by this process, you see at the bottom, the sine expansion gives us one point. 1.4159, and then the uh, processor itself does the calculation below, which I believe is done by the uh, 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 486 floating point processor. So you see we are accurate to, how many is that? That's about uh, 12 decimal points. So we can see in essentially one line of code embedded in a do loop using this clever method of finding a, a, um, an error function that is zero for the desired value, we're able to implement this, uh, this algorithm very simply in fourth, the natural for fourth. Now to summarize this, yeah, I realize that if you have a calculator or a program that can compute sine, it can also compute pi. And I use that for our check value. So the point here was not that we're really efficiently computing pi, but it's how to explore that algorithm for finding a declining error function. So 
The purpose really is to find uh, shortcuts or clever techniques that might be useful on other programs. And also this method gives you much more clarity than an infinite number series. In other words, in a small number of terms, we can watch how that uh, error that uh, error function uh, uh, declines and becomes very well behaved as it approaches zero. So that is my presentation. I thank you for your rapt attention. And uh, are there any questions? Bill? Yes, Kevin. Floating point sine function. Say, say again. Point sine function comes from the floating point uh, processor. Is it is it true that there's no high available directly in the floating point uh, processor? On the program I'm running, sure. There's a value. There's a function pi. It's uh, uh, yeah. There's a, there, there, in the system, there's a constant pi, and it yeah, I believe it's developed by accessing the floating point processor. All right, uh, back to back to mission. Back to mission control. Thank you for your rapt attention. Any other questions? All right. I, yeah, I had a quick question. Go ahead, Go Brett. 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 How could you apply that to quantum simulation and FPGA tips? <laughs> what? 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 I'm. I, 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 I love that question. Yeah. Uh, come, come back and see me in three years, and then I will understand all the issues that you just raised. <laughs> that, so, that, thank you for the challenge. Thank you for the postgraduate challenge. <laughs> can I can I kind of expand on that, see if it makes sense? Using sure, your, go ahead. Um, the... Yes. <laughs> so um, can you pull up the formula again on your screen so I can look at it just to make sure with the cosine, um, with the cosine and the end values? Let me see if I understand this correct. I taught myself math, and sometimes I don't understand it correctly. So. <laughs> Let's see. Because I was thinking, if I'm correct, I was looking at that as a Fourier transform kind of thing is what I was thinking. That oh, could be utilized know. in that. The very first yeah. one? Yes, that's correct. That one? Well, let me see. That'll pop up. Share your screen. Oh, I didn't share. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking. It looks nice here at this side. <laughs> it looks really good on my side. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, can I? Sh yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, can I share my screen now? That kind of figures out what I wanted to, and that applies to the quantum enumeration that I'm working on. Sure. Well, not enumeration, but quantum. Sure. So let Go me ahead. see this real quick. Uh, share screen, screen, share screen. All right. Start broadcast. All right, let me see. Let me know if it's broadcasting. It is. We can you're, hear you're live. Oh. All right, here we go. So this, I use chat GDP for a lot of my calculations, just makes it easier. Uh, there we go. So uh, let's see, do you see where I'm going with this to a degree? I don't know if you understand the math um, behind this, but you apply these, let's see, these cases. It's gonna take me a second to figure this out. Ah, uh, yes, uh, quantum computing state can be the vector. Yeah, so essentially what we're doing is we're taking, we would take your application and apply it to an initial state to generate the the quantum state, does that make sense to a degree? And then we take the Hammond gate and we apply the, how the breakdown of the cosine and the in values, does that make sense what I'm saying? Um, do you see how that could be applied to this? Not to me, you've totally lost me. <laughs> um, totally. Do you understand, uh, um, where did I lose you? What part did I lose you on? I'm a little, a little in depth in math. Um, well, I got basically. lost. I got lost from the part where it started with chat GPT-4. From there on, I got lost. Oh. Um, well, do you see how the, uh, do you understand initial states in quantum computing necessarily? No. I don't know if I'm going. No, oh. um. I, you're, you're, so, you're so off on another orbit that what you should do is next month, put together a, uh, 
intro on this and give us give us this talk next month because it looks very interesting, but it needs to be a standalone presentation. Yeah, I kind of figured that. I got the from Ackert. I got an email from him. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, this I like your idea though. I like the way that you did the computing and the pie. It was very interesting and unique. That's something kind of what I was working on to a degree, except I was using the quantum gates and using QSET and stuff like that from IBM and Python libraries for it. But yeah, I'll I'll let you uh I'll let this conversation continue. Um, that's pretty much all <laughs> for now. Sure. Really, really, I look forward to it. It really looks interesting, but uh, it needs to it it needs to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, so the other yes. people can the other people can follow. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. All right. Yep. All right. Any other questions for Bill? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bill. We really appreciate it. That was great. Let me uh, let me ask uh, Bob Armstrong if he's uh, ready to go. Yep. Yeah, um... I, I actually wanted to start adding stuff with respect to that, that um, matrix stuff because I um, uh, wanted to give a, a comment on the difference between, well, the evolution of, of the, um, the patient. Uh, where's the bloody, oh, share screen. Ah, they got it highlighted in green. Bill, That's is that the good. Google uh, Zoom? Bill's pump or is that you? What? Am I am I shared now? 